stay in the atmosphere because they wouldn't be doing it every day. These things mix with the air we breathe, and they, they are, are not healthy. So this, is, this was the reason I began to, to question. Uh, because, you know, if somebody's doing something that might harm you or you or your family, uh, you, you want to find out what it is. Absolutely. And the thing, even without knowing, George, even without knowing the exact composition of what's being sprayed, uh, you can get some indication of the potential health risks from epidemiological studies of pollution particles. I mean, these are, a after all, a kind of pollution particles. And uh, the, what studies have shown is that the particles in the size range are associated with Alzheimer's disease, lung cancer, risk for stroke, risk for cardiovascular disease, mm. lung inflammation and diabetes, reduced renal function in older males. And yet most people would have no idea it's coming from above. From above. Morbidity and premature mortality, decreased male fertility, low birth rate, onset of asthma, increased hospital admissions, and increased cognitive or decreased cognitive ability in older women. Marv, in your opinion, where are they loading up these planes? Where are they taking off from? And I cannot find one of these pilots. Pilots. Have you been lucky, lucky enough to find one? Somebody uh, do no, a No, I'm, I'm sure that. Uh, well, uh, first, let me say in a more general sense. You know, I've 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 written to, and this is this is on my website. I've written to the mayor of San Diego and the the police chief to tell them about the health risks, and then that they should be doing something about it. They should be warning children not to be playing outside when the spraying is going on. Things like that. They did nothing. They did nothing. Now, uh, there's certainly laws, childhood endangerment, for example, uh, that, that should be covered by this. But apparently there is some secret gag order, which has to be an illegal gag order. Mm -hmm. Nobody has the right to poison the air we breathe nope. and to order people to be silent about it or to lie about it. Nobody has that right. Uh, the only way that this system can function as it is, is by secrecy and by deceit, deceiving the public. Are you 100% convinced that this is happening? Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, and, and even, uh, you know, if, if you ask so if somebody about a, a topic like ghosts, okay, Maybe a true believer might say, well, there are ghosts in the world. But unless the ordinary person can see such a manifestation, it's hard to relate to. But I'm telling you, with the spraying of the atmosphere, all you have to do is to look up up in the air. I mean, you, you see this, and you see they, they often spray at night, where so you don't see the spraying. But what's what they... they gross effect after the, the, the trails disperse uh, is to leave a white a white haze in mm -hmm. the sky. That's the light that's being scattered. Looks by like, those it looks like tiny smog, particles. but it's not. Yes, that's right. It's, it, it's light that's scattered by those particles. And uh, it's so you mentioned uh, the word conspiracy theory. That was a term that was invented by the Central Intelligence Agency. That's right. Uh, back uh, during the uh, the Kennedy assassination. To put down people who were getting too close to the truth. Exactly, and that is the big lie now. They'll, they'll brand, I've been branded a conspiracy theorist and all sorts of other things. Southern California, Marv, is getting blasted with horrible fires. Uh, there's uh, been a drought for some time. Uh, the concern now of mudslides, if and when it does rain. But do you think think these fires have anything to do with these sprays? No, no, I know that the fires have something to do you with You know the they do. All right, well, if, if only in the sense that we have, uh, there has been, been an artificially created drought for the last four years or so. It has been artificially created by all of the spraying. The weather moves from uh, west to east, 
And so the spring it takes place over uh, California uh, and in off in the Pacific, the, you know, to the the eastern side of the the Pacific. And the whole purpose is to prevent rain from falling in California. And uh, on my website, uh, you, you'll see a a, a, a line that. Uh, just links to uh, California uh, desiccation uh, and, and the reason and it's a, it contains a, that's a, a worldview photograph that shows the spring over over Southern California and it shows the, the spring the heavy spring Jeez. at the edge of the Pacific Ocean and it shows the white clouds that can't pass it and that are just moving upward now these things may be augmented by radio frequency uh, controls I, I don't have any insider knowledge on that Mark if, if these people who are behind this are listening to this program right now they may and they must be going crazy listening well, to it. Well, they, they, they certainly uh, know what I'm talking about, and they probably worry about who knows what I know. We, we have been following, and I'm going to be doing a, uh, another report on that in the next coming uh, week or two, of uh, holistic doctors, uh, some 81 of them now. Uh, have been killed or have died in very bizarre situations. The latest was a heart surgeon who was found with a knife in his torso by his little daughter, and they claim he committed suicide, yet he missed his heart. Uh, it, 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 it's not it, funny. I'm sorry. It's, I know. I know. I, so I, I get, get what you're saying. My, my point is, are you concerned about your safety? Well, of course I am, but I'm I'm, I'm also uh, very wary, and I also try to put things into place that if anything happens to me, um, the perpetrators will 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 suffer greatly. Let's go to some calls here for you. Our special guest, of course, Dr. J. Marvin Herndon. His website is linked up at coasttocoastam.com, nuclearplanet.com, and uh, your book's still available, Marv. Uh, yes, yes, it is. I, I should say that the book was published in, in uh, the Herndon's Earth and the Dark Side of Science, was published in 2014. So the second chapter, which is about the aerial spraying, is much in need of updating and yeah. revision. But, uh, but the, the rest of everything is, is, is just as true as it was when I published it. To the phones now we go. Let's go east of the Rockies. We're going to go to Quakertown, Pennsylvania. Texas is with us. Hi, Texas. Howdy. How are you all doing? Good, sir. Thank you. On uh, contrails, do you remember TWA Airlines? Yes, uh, sure uh, do. I remember TWA. Hub used uh, to be in St. Louis. I'll go back to that time period from the 50s into the 60s when the jets were starting to come online. Okay. When I looked up at that time, the contrails might have been about 50 miles behind the jet, considering the speed. Right. Never has contrail gone from horizon to horizon. <laughs> they are spraying all kinds of garbage. And... Uh, George, I heard you mention about the uh, Jesuits one day. Yeah. I suggest to you look very hard at what they really are. They are the military arm of the Vatican. You may be right about that, too, That's Texas. It's inter interesting that the Pope is a Jesuit. Yes, they're very powerful. Um, I've also uh, provided information to the Pope. No response yet. No response at all. Oh, let me let me um, mention what you said about contrails in the 1950s sure. and the 60s. There's less likelihood of getting contrails from jets nowadays because they're fan jets. In other words, most of the thrust, 90% of the thrust, does not involve the fuel directly. It's the air. So there's much less likelihood of getting uh, contrails from the moisture in the exhaust. Uh, so they're, they're, 
short, generally shorter than they were back in the, in the 50s and 60s. But the contrails is, the, is one of the big lies. Now, as people are beginning to see through that, they're trying to say that it's, it's, it's other particles that are put out of commercial jet engines and things like that. But, but all of this is a lie. Uh, this, uh, this is a uh, deliberate a spraying activity. Let's go to Linda in South Carolina, first time caller for us. Good morning, Linda. Hi, how are you doing tonight? Okay, thanks. Um, I, I agree with what's being said here because I was in the military and I, I learned a lot of scary things, but three things that really stick out in my mind is if you ever see a low flying plane with some kind of smoke or exhaust coming out of the back of it, take mm -hmm. cover. Run. Number one. Yeah. Number two, if you're in the military, you're a property of the government, so they can do whatever they want to with you. And to answer your question that you asked earlier about why would they do this to us, they also taught us that it is every American's duty to be tested unwillingly by the government. Interesting that you say that, Linda, because back in the 50s, they sprayed Navy ships testing sailors. They sprayed over St. Louis, over the population, with chemicals to test them. Uh, they've been doing this forever, Marvin. They did some horrific things. Uh, for example, they, they, they gave pregnant women uh, what they were told they were drinking a vitamin, when in fact it had in it radioactive iron. Then there was also a set of experiments where they injected newborn babies as young as one week with radioactive iodine. Oh, jeez! They put they put uh, oh this is this is terrible. They 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 put in schoolrooms sources of radiation. Listen, they're as bad as Joseph Mengele was in, in Nazi Germany. Uh, yeah, as bad, as bad if not worse. And of course, the uh, you know the the Operation Paperclip, where the Nazi Germans were uh, the allowed to that, come in yep. to this country uh, and become part of the the science establishment. Oh sure, we needed them for the rocket program. Yeah, well, I guess we uh, we got probably more than we bargained for. You think they might have been behind some of this? Oh, I think I think the 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 mentality and the secret uh, research was it was certainly. I mean, this is the the absence of of ethics of human uh, caring for other people. What other countries, Marv, do you think are spraying their population? Oh, I'll tell you, it's it's all of the European Union, all of the British Commonwealth uh, countries, including including Canada. Uh, there, I've seen myself the spraying in Egypt. I've seen it in India. Uh, people tell me it's occurring in in Russia and in China and maybe elsewhere. So the people, though, that are the victims of this, those of us, we're really just collateral damage. Their their effort is really based on what I understand from you to control and manipulate the weather to make it globally warmer, you know, to profit off of things like that. But we're the collateral damage. So they're doing this. They're not out saying, we want to kill the planet. We want to kill everybody. Well, but it's affecting us when they do but, it. But, but they are, in fact, killing the planet. Yes, they are. They are. But, but, but we're the collateral damage, would you say? Well, I, I, yes, I, that's, that, that's the... the, the that's a terrible way of looking at it, but it's a true way of yeah. looking at it. I mean, look at California. I mean, we've been desiccated for uh, at least four years. Farms are, are going to fail if they haven't already, and of course the, the agricultural corporations can buy them up cheap. I mean, that's one fringe benefit for them. But the desiccation makes fire hazard. I mean, we've always had fires in California. But we've never been this dry, to my knowledge. Right, and this one, this one is bad. And this one is bad. Now, there's some other things that happen with the spraying. You increase the, the electrical charge separation, so you, you, you have more potential for lightning strikes. Lightning strikes ignite fires. There's some people that think that the, the powdered material 
uh, can uh, ignite. Now, I don't have any evidence for that, except what I did as an experiment some years ago. I was making iron sulfide by precipitating it as a liquid, and I filtered it. It was very finely powdered, and I filtered it, and as it dried, it started burning. It ignited. Fine powders do that. You, you, you know about the, the explosions and, and silos that contain flour. Flour and wheat and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They blow up. It's like a bomb. So, I mean, they've been setting the stage for this fire. And, uh, you know, sadly, a firefighter was killed today. Yeah. Uh, uh, leaving a wife, a pregnant wife, and a, and a two-year-old child. And a true hero. And a true hero, and, and this is this is barbarian. This is the this is the deep state, and uh, this is this is what uh, uh, this is. I think all put into place during uh, Barack Obama's administration, or be, or even before, Marv. Well, the military was doing this all the way back to to 1958, at least. There was a, a news report uh, of. Uh, uh, one day in in Palm Springs, where the, these trails were across the sky and just were there all day long. Right. Is, isn't it possible that presidents have no idea what's going on? That they're just not told? Oh, I, I'm sure that, well, the one thing about secret programs is that uh, they're secret. They're secret. And, and there's need to know, and there's compartmentalization. And most people who are involved in this activity have no idea the health risks and the damage that's being done. We've always felt uh, with the UFO field that presidents... Uh, on a need-to-know basis, and most of them aren't on that need-to-know basis. They're not told anything. Well, there's a, well, it has, as has been coming out recently, uh, there's 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 a lot of deep state activity in in the in the central part of the government. Let's go to the phones again, east of the Rockies, my neck of the woods, Tom in St. Louis. Hey, Tom, go ahead. Uh, how you doing, George? Great. Um, I was watching the local uh, Fox affiliate for the evening news on the 12th, which was the first day of Hanukkah, by the way. Mm -hmm. And um, surprisingly enough, the weatherman, um, I don't know if I can say it or not, the call letters, KTVI. Oh, yeah, I know the station well. Okay, yeah. Uh, the, the weatherman was showing the picture of the day, which just happened to be chemtrails uh, slash contrails that someone had taken mm -hmm. from Chesterfield or somewhere in that neck of the woods out in the county, St. Louis County area. And uh, he was remarking how it looked like the Star of David and it was the first day of Hanukkah, et cetera, et yeah. cetera, and uh, making no big deal of it. But I've noticed here in, in, in Missouri, I actually I'm south of St. Louis in Festus, and it's been really, we're in severe drought down here, too. And the chemtrail, uh, the amount of chemtrails in the sky has been really high. That's true. Hold on, Tom. I want you to finish up your thoughts when we come back in just a moment on Coast to Coast AM. Coast Insiders, the new...